Hi, I'm Catherine Curie. My day job is focused on enabling OER in under-resourced schools and legislative and policy changes that support OER. Hi, I am Jonathan Poritz. After spending about 100,000 years phase two teaching and researching math and computer science, I've been working with CC and a number of other open ed related NGOs in Colorado, USA, and more recently in Italy. I was also in the CC AI working group a couple of years ago before the recent type explosion. We met via the Creative Commons certificate course, which Jonathan was facilitating and have been collaborating ever since on OER and tax, copyright, the ethics of open sharing. And today we ask the question, will generative AI DDoS the commons? To be clear of what we're talking about with generative AI, we use the term AINT or AINT, which is another acronym for artificial intelligence. It's nice because it emphasizes how AINT fails to be so much of what it is sold as. AINT is a US contraction of is not. And terminology matters. Think of the word cloud for network-based services, which conjures some image of clean and fluffy cotton balls floating in the air, when the reality is that there are massive server farms somewhere consuming vast quantities of electricity, heating water, creating e-waste, and so on. AINT allows us to question how AI has been marketed and framed and ask if it is primarily about making money and implying we shouldn't look behind the curtain since we wouldn't understand what's there if we did. AINTs are, lar are large and powerful statistical models, but there's nothing particularly new philosophically or structurally about them. What is new is how much data is used to train the models, a product of enormous data sets available today from the internet, and the data structures inside the programs. Data structures are things like spreadsheets or lists or binary trees, which help manipulate stored data. Modern AINT often uses various forms of neural networks, which is a terribly misleading term. It's very little like a biological network of neurons, but only vaguely inspired by them. The data sets are largely scraped from the internet or sometimes large corpora, which have been created for particular limited purposes. Generative AINT is merely about feeding some pseudo random numbers into the statistical model to generate new sequences with high probability by that model. An analogy might be if I wrote a program that output a sequence of heads and tails according to a model of flipping a biased coin. That is fundamentally what generative AINT does. It does not reason about the prompts or answer a question or summarize some given information. It merely puts together tokens in a way which is of relatively high probability given its training data. As we say in our title, a not unreasonable analogy with what AINT could be could be doing to the commons is DDoS. DDoS, or a distributed denial of service, is a cyber attack where multiple requests flood a server in such a way that they, are, that they render the service or content unavailable to users. This is the problem we are primarily concerned with. This is the problem we are primarily concerned with, that the prolific output of AINT will likely spam the commons with low quality noise that will dampen down the valuable signal for which humans are searching in that public space in a kind of DDoS attack on the public's attention. DDoS attacks are powerful because they use automation to do a little bit of, to do that little bit of evil at scale, which is exactly one of the important steps in what Cory Doctorow calls the enchitification of internet services in a popular recent article called The Enchitification of TikTok or How Exactly Platforms Die. Whenever I hear a service or platform wants to operate at scale, I get the feeling that it wants to treat its users as its product, part of Doctorow's enchitification. DDoSing the commons is about eight commodifying original content created by humans and flooding it back into the commons as noise. So our focus is not merely on either the input or output as typically determined, but also on the long-term consequences of generative AI output over time. As Turing already noted, quite small errors in the initial conditions can have an overwhelming effect on at a later time. Although the Turing quote refers to him talking about the continu a continuous real world, not the state machines of computational players in the imitation game, it is also not, not inaccurate to use the, in terms of a general principle. Initial instabilities can lead to even worse outcomes if today's models are trained on a commons flooded with the outputs of yesterday's models in a kind of doom scrolling Ouroboros. There are cases where Wikipedians are using ChatGPT, which is in turn trained on Wikipedia, and so the snake bites its own tail. In a larger sense, to the extent that generative AINT is supposed to be replacing the boring human labor of summarizing re art recent articles in a field, or creating essays that students can submit in classes, or writing cover letters for job applications, it is supposed to be based on high quality human creations. There can be no benefit and lots of nonlinear chaos type danger from closing a loop and using outputs and inputs for the next, using outputs as inputs for the next model. 
The commons is not a resource. It is a resource plus a defined community and the protocols, values and norms devised by the community to manage its resources collectively with transparency and accountability. We cannot meaningfully separate out the resources from the community and the values that the community espouses and the mechanisms whereby resources are managed. When considering AI-generated content, the term sharing implies ownership and agency. An output, however, however engineered, is still manufactured to demand, no matter how open-ended the statistical procedures deployed are. But here we are. In this paper, we take an ethical approach to the concept of better sharing advocated by Creative Commons, noting that better sharing is in and of itself a value statement and that content sharing cannot be decoupled from ethical concerns. Although there is a Creative Commons position paper on the ethics of open sharing, given its focus on the holders of copyright and their decisions to share openly or not, it is silent in terms of generative AI. We accept the Creative Commons description of better sharing as that which is contextual, inclusive, just, equitable, reciprocal, and sustainable. But query to what extent multimodal generative ain't producing text, images, videos, voice and music can potentially add value to the commons or if instead its enormous potential will be squandered through enabling worth sharing, sharing that is non-inclusive, devoid of context, exclusive, unjust, inequitable, predatory upon the works of humans and unsustainable, placing profit above both people and planet and ask if it is not merely commodifying the resources of the commons for private use, thereby creating enclosures. Before, however, we get to even get to the values of better sharing, we need to talk about sharing in the context of open. By open sharing, we mean the act of sharing digital materials either under an open license or by applying a public domain tool or mark. As members of CC, we believe that open sharing is inherently an act of social solidarity, reflecting a belief that we all have a stake in our collective body of creative and intellectual wealth. All open sharing has to be thoughtful, deliberative, explicit, and predicated upon meaningful voluntary consent by the owner of that content. Cultural appropriation utterly violates social solidarity and copyright holders do have a right to withdraw consent specifically where the context, context changes. The fact is that ain't, by virtue of what it ain't, cannot share in beliefs, values or assume an ethical stance. Ain't is not human and has no moral agency. The concern we raise is that ain't content may not equate to better sharing, though it is still a valuable tool. But from an ethical framework, what if ain't generated output violates one or more copyrights due to the non-transparent and possibly illegal scraping of text, music, images, videos, and other original content that is copyright from all over? There are ample examples of this already happening. And rather than creating something new, at minimum a true amalgam, in at least some documented instances, the generated content is pretty much identical to the original. A major concern that we both of us note with regard to articles on AINT is that time and again the anthrop anthropomorphic fallacy arises. Ever since one of the very first chatbots, Eliza, was deployed more than half a century ago in 1966, we find humans ascribing emotions and motiva motivations to non-humans and objects. The author of Eliza was absolutely dumbfounded by the fact that extremely short exposures to a relatively simple computer program could induce powerful delusion, delusional thinking in quite normal people. Ain't simply ain't human. As its name literally states, chat GPT is nothing but yet another iteration in a long history of chatbots. However, one that is trained on an extraordinarily large and grossly expanding data set. 
the large language models take a brute force approach to language, generating lines of text off the basis of what is statistically plausible, but which may be entirely fabricated, such as references that do not exist in the real world and associated URLs that lead to 404s, no source found. Ain't cannot hallucinate, as these are creations of a conscious mind in an altered state. Um, but it does produce statistically likely sequences of words or images, video, voice, and music. And some of these other multimodal Ain'ts produces works more akin to digital forgery than a true amalgamation. CC's better sharing doesn't explicitly say share good stuff, but maybe it should. Certainly no one wants to get into the business of judging the quality of others' artistic production or consumption from an aesthetic perspective. But while we have the right to our own artistic judgments and opinions, we do not have the right to our own facts. While freedom of expression is something we should fight to protect, we can also fight to prevent vaccine mis misinformation, racism, abuse, and speech acts which harm or endanger others. Similarly, plain falsehoods and texts which contain logical fallacies but bear the surface markings of thoughtful reasoning, which often come out of statistically likely sequences of words manipulated without any understanding, are hugely problematic. Hence the example on this, on, on this slide of a ChatGPT response which makes absurd, incorrect leaps of reasoning. You will hear that Ain't can pass the bar exam and become a lawyer that has been tested to have an IQ of 155, does better at diagnosing illnesses than do experienced doctors, and ain't an ain't artist produced a new Rembrandt, et cetera, et cetera. Don't believe it. The quality of the output is low. The reported successes are in very specific controlled situations, and the spooky errors are frequently horrific. For example, in the eating dose disorder hotline, which removed from human vault, which moved from human volunteers to ain't and started to, to, to tell anorexic callers to measure their body fat more carefully. As Emily Bender and Alex Hanna of the Mystery AI Hype Theater 3000 say, always check the footnotes. Their podcast is full of careful footnote checking and other investigation. What powers ain't? Not clouds, but vast banks of hundreds of millions of computers juiced on fossil fuels, exhibiting a Kudza-like growth, increasingly situated in remote areas of high poverty, consuming rapidly expanding amounts of electricity. Described as a vertically, vertically integrated information electric utility by Bryce, Google alone is responsible for between 1 and 2% of the world's energy usage, using, using more than 100 other countries. And it is only one of the giant five. Every data center has its own electric grid with huge diesel-fired generators, banks of batteries, and tanks filled with fuel that can allow the on-site generators to fuel the data centers for hours or even days. Server farms are a very long, away, long way away from the cool, gentle clouds they are described as, and they run hot, exceedingly hot. As such, they need to be cooled. It is estimated that ChatGPT uses about 500 milliliters of water for every conversation, or 1.2 pints. How is that sustainable? Scale is what is important here, and the fact that billions of VC dollars chasing after the next NFT are flowing into generative AI to buy even more computers for even a large array of servers consuming more and more of our planet's finite resources, and no matter what the offset, still pumping uh, carbon into the air and generating massive e-waste is an issue. When it comes to inclusivity, some have wryly, but not inaccurately, deemed the outputs of AINT as man's planning as a service. The fault lies within the training sets as garbage in equates to garbage out or GIGO effect. When the input data is fundamentally flawed, either through being deliberately skewed to a particular worldview or inadvertently lacking in a representativeness or diversity, too small, too geographically bound, limited to but a small subset of the teeming variation that is humanity writ large, or focused only on a very few languages for which there are a lot of texts available, the output is directly and negatively impacted. Wikipedia and Reddit are both used in training data, and the map clearly indicates those editing in English are predominantly from the global north, and both communities are overwhelmingly male, and not representative of the world at large. Bias in equates to bias out, as demonstrated when Google's AI bot, 
Ingrid Botts touted the benefits of genocide, slavery, fascism, and other evils. And ain't trained on skewed or biased data will fabricate worse, not better inputs. More is also not better, especially if it's inherently skewed in the first place. And some authors point out diminishing returns in terms of accuracy with increasing data sets while vastly using more resources, specifically electricity. And for those of us who are in the global south, the disparities are widening rather than diminishing. Having suffered vaccine apartheid, wherein we had to wait an excruciatingly long time while the global north hogged supply, did not share methods, and to add insult to injury, we paid inflated prices for the vaccines, we are well aware of what monopolistic positions mean, power and dominance. We feel most acutely what I've done, the Nino effect, nothing in, nothing out. When the data is non-existent or even small, large language models simply fail. In this situation, Ain't's promises are empty, signifying nothing. From a contextual perspective, generative texts are synthetic language. They manufacture something that has plausibility, but in a fact and reference-free zone. We have instances of chat GPT documents generated by lawyers where references have been produced that simply do not exist. And the legal community has not taken very kindly to alternative case law. In art and culture, generating imagery can lead to abominations, uh, such as the image above, which is not merely aesthetically horrific. Unlike my colleague, I am prepared to go there. Um, but which graphically depicts um, both cultural appropriation and a thoughtless yet deliberate violation of sacred space. We have chosen not to show the originals of Aboriginal spiritual art, since while photos are available, we could not find an instance shared under an open license with meaningful, explicit consent demonstrated by the creator of the work. But our question is then, from whence was the input data for this image generate, obtained? Unbridled scraping of all the things from the interwebs without guardrails or explicit consent violates rules both written and unruled within the community. And in this context, it is noted that George R. R. Martin and others have filed a recent lawsuit against ChatGPT, stating that at the heart of these algorithms is systematic theft on a mass scale and that their copyright works were used in the training data sets without their permission. From an equity point of view, some authors say that VC's actual use case for AI is treating workers badly. Ain't image fa fabricators are not artists, but they are being used to normalize appropriation of art from artists. At least with regard to image generation, often what is produced is very like, if not pretty much identical, as you can see, to what has been created previously in the by Carlini into Alia, and likely also copyright, which would render this digital forgery. Others note that products from AI image generators are flooding the market with content that is being used to compete with and displace artists, having a chilling effect on cultural production and consumption as a whole, causing real, tangible harm to artists. Copyright law is currently unequipped to tackle many of the types of harms posed by these systems to content creators. And of huge concern is the practice of data laundering, whereby nonprofits such as academic institutions gather images under the US, US exemption for fair use, ostensibly for educational and research purposes, but which receive funding from for profit entities, which in turn train their commercial products on these data sets, thereby deriving downstream benefit from their donation and ensuring the data has the appearance of something that would fall under the fair use provision in US copyright law. This is not equitable, no matter how you try to pass it. It is a trickery of slout of hand. Now you see it, now you don't. The problem with a philosophy of move fast and break things is that, well, actually, it does break things. From a reciprocity point of view, Reciprocity is not just about taking, not giving, but also taking. It's about better taking, accepting only that which is freely, willingly, openly, and explicitly given. Reciprocal implies a balance, 
something more than what is purely extractive and not appropriating that which is creative, original and copyright, leaving behind dross. What if data laundering and the abuse of fair use provisions appropriate, expropriates original creations from the global south under the guise of fair use without compensation? And in, in return, what do we get? E-waste to landfills, microplastics in our oceans? As Blake's poem denotes, the fruit of the poison tree is toxic. From point of justice with regard to sharing, it's self-evidently unjust when an artist's copyright is violated without consent and, and passed off as public domain through public data laundering. The fault lies not with AINT, which has no agency, but with those who unjustly scraped the data from the interwebs and were clearly sufficiently concerned with the internet inherent wrongness of the data laundering services were sought. It has that behind every great fortune is an equally great crime. But in this instance, the crime of hiding in plain sight, masquerading as fair use. And in places of accelerating change, justice and law can be slow to act. In their paper, Extracting Training Data from Diffusion Models, Carlini et al. note that sometimes diffusion models memorize individual images from their training data and emit them at generation time. In the example above, their works incorporated into training data sets without attribution or consent, thereby stripping away their commercial and moral rights. The authors note that data is not available, data is available online may not have been intended to, to be. Lion, which is an image corpus used for training, for example, contains unintentionally released medical images of several patients. Modern eight statistical models contain millions, possibly hundreds of millions of parameters. One way to think of those parameters is as a compressed version of training data, but a compressed or encrypted copy, copy of copyright restricts when copy is made. Creative Commons licenses allow that compressed or encrypted copying be, be, be done, but always includes attribution, and AINTs are not giving any attribution, accumulating more and more documentation debt. Non-commercial, share-alike, and no derivative license clauses also may apply, but we have no way of knowing because there is no transparency of training data sets. Note that even using works which are in the public domain is unlikely to prevent this copyright disaster globally. In many jurisdictions where the copyright system has an author's rights foundation, for example, many continental European ones, even works in the public domain have a requirement of acknowledged patrimony. As one CC expert working in Italy says, here CC0 is basically CC BY. What we are seeing is individual rights being run over roughshod by corporate wrongs. The purpose of copyright is to create an incentive for authors to share their works by granting them a limited monopoly over them in terms of US law. And it is not met if copyright works are swept up without consent and used in training data. When the dignity and privacy of Michael Schumacher is violated by someone generating a fake interview with him through using generative AI, who can be sued? Where is the responsibility? Is AINT allowing venture capital to expropriate without compensation not only the shared commons, but also copyright works, thereby sweeping all within the purview of a tiny set of dominant companies, enabling monopolistic positions and negatively impacting our climate? Historically, the commons have been a place of contestation, pitting those who would enclose resources and thereby gain dominance over them, turning shared resources into private property, which denies the public at large the capacity to access and use these same resources. Land enclosures literally meant locking people out of sharing a common good. The kinds of extraordinary funding required to establish data center alone locks many, for instance, in the global south out of participating in a competitive manner in such work. We have discussed how AINT, generative AINT included, is exploitative, damaging people on the planet, exacerbating racism, or at least having the potential to exacerbate racism, colonialism, sexism, homophobia, and other ills and operating at scale is DDoSing the commons. We believe that as a community, Creative Commons needs to ponder very deeply how their community and its values, its norms, its processes, its policies can be protected from degradation. Those of us in the global south do not feel included in these conversations. 
simply because a lot of new startups exist in the ain't space as venture capital flees from the equally ridiculous and unfounded claims of blockchain solution providers into the supposedly transformative potential of ain't solutions providers, it does not mean that we should follow the money or uncritically support this current iteration of tech-enabled grifters. How can CC celebrate the importance of work around traditional knowledge, understanding culture in its context, have a sensitivity to the sacred um, religious practices of other, of other people, and prevent harm to marginalized and colonized populations and cultures, and at the same time celebrate excesses of ain't technologies, which um, increase racist and colonial nonsense on the net and exacerbate extremes of wealth and power? concentration. So moving from the um, the uh, possible ills um, and le practical and legal failures and, as well as ethical failures that we have noted, um, we wanted to end with some specific suggestions. Uh, we have some what might be considered pie in the sky or impractical suggestions, but we believe that governments can act. Um, some of the suggestions we make may not fit directly in current copyright law, they could then be new sui generis rights, such as the sui generis database right, which some countries have. Um, we see no problem creating new rights and requirements if they're broadly more beneficial than the current unbridled standard profit. <laughs> so here are uh, two kind of categories of, of suggestions that we have. One of them is uh, uh, um, around the, the issues that we discussed in the just sharing uh, material above. And there are two points, one of them about trans, both of them about transparency. The first one is on transparency of training data. So as we've noted, uh, it seems quite um, probable that the current ain't, uh, generative ain't productions can be potentially violating of, of creators' copyrights. So the only way to enforce copyrights would be if we knew, if the creators knew their works were potentially in this, uh, in this uh, training set. So we, we believe a first step is necessary that all, um, all ain't models must make available to the public um, their their entire training data set. Another thing is um, uh, transparency of the algorithms and the code um, to make for ink models again that uh, that, that are, are um, being used for the public, being made available to the public. It could be required that they disclose their source code or algorithms. You know, it, it might be feared that this would disincentivize investment in new work and new research to invent new code and algorithms. But if, if that's a fear, then a patent-like limited monopoly over the use of that code, code or algorithm could be created by exactly the same reasoning as creates other IP rights. Um, two other suggestions we have which are intended to promote human agency are involved marking AI ain't inputs and outputs. We believe that a mark for outputs of generative ain't is uh, extremely important. Um, it's hard to do this in a reasonable way. Would the output of any algorithm be required to bear this mark? What about an elementary school student's arithmetic homework? CC should convene a working group of experts as soon as possible to design a marking system which reduces the danger of ain't out outputs DDoSing the comments. And finally, a mark uh, to indicate that a creator did not want their work used to train ain'ts. Um, such a mark um, could be put on this work. It's hard to do in practice. Again, it would presumably be a new sui generis right, but presumably the copyright holder would be the one to apply the mark in jurisdictions with a strong utilitarian tradition, while in jurisdictions with a strong author's rights tradition, it would be the applied by the ones who are owed attribution. Um, precision must be found also for what technically constitutes use as training data, the kind of thing that the creator might want to exclude. One technical mechanism for doing this would be to add new syntax to robots.txt, as Google has recently suggested. I remind you that robots.txt is a file that can be exist on a web server, which specifies which kinds of crawlers should, ple should please not process the site or specific parts thereof. Note that the requests in robots.txt are just that, requests, not technically or legally enforceable requirements. We would like them to be enforceable legally in certain, in certain regards. So an answer to our original question, yes, generative ain't will DDoS the commons unless, unless those of us who believe in not merely the resources, but the norms and the protocols for the common step up and become active in defense of them. 
the commons, both as a community and as a resource, require shepherding and protection. The values that are implicit in the concept of better sharing have been made explicit by Creative Commons, and we as a community need to work together to shape how we want our commons to be and ensure that it is indeed sustainable, equitable, inclusive, just, contextual and reciprocal. We are incredibly fortunate to have amongst us a community of legal and technical experts, creators, sharers and activists to pave the way to better sharing and oppose isolation, balkanization and corruption and degradation of the commons. And we would love you to share us and join us in this work. Thank you so much. Thank you.